Last year was a very difficult year for the planet, and and, and amongst that, patients with myeloma uh, struggled particularly with the pandemic. And many of us in different countries tried to collect data to try and delineate exactly the impact of of COVID-19 on the lives and survivorship of myeloma patients. Now, uh, in the UK, on behalf of the UK Myeloma Forum, I ran a registry similar to colleagues across Europe and in the US. And the problem with these uh, types of registries is that they are inherent to selection bias. That is that the notification to the registry is based on a clinician identifying a patient and forwarding the appropriate information to the registry, in this case, the, the registry that I held. So therefore, what we were getting was a snapshot, but not necessarily a true denominator of the impact. But anyway, we have what we have. And looking at that data, it does uh, highlight that patients with myeloma, particularly during the first wave, were struggling to uh, um, uh, get through the pandemic and there was a significant impact on survivorship. So of the blood cancers, patients with myeloma seem to have the, the poorest outlook. And it's not just about age, it's not just about comorbidity. It did seem to be something inherent to myeloma that perhaps was driving this. But as I said at the, the outset of, of, of this answer, that what we really need is to get a proper handle uh, and using digital health uh, resources to work out what the denominator is. Because there will be patients who were tested in the community that we don't know anything about. There are patients who will have been infected and managed in the community that we don't know anything about. So the true survivorship picture still needs to be defined. And then, of course, we move into the, the realms of vaccination. And we've known for years that myeloma patients, because of their inherent uh, cellular and humoral deficiencies, struggle with vaccinations, whether it be seasonal flu or pneumococcal and haemophilus influenza vaccines. So therefore, the expectation is, is that the COVID vaccines will probably have a less impactful uh, use for myeloma patients because of that, but we don't know. And also the COVID vaccines are using different vaccine technologies that perhaps might have a better impact in myeloma patients than the standard uh, seasonal flu vaccines or the, the antibacterial vaccines. We'll need to wait and see. And as the audience is aware, the UK for once was actually ahead of the curve uh, with regards to vaccines. So we've actually been uh, looking at uh, myeloma patients' responses to vaccines, not only serological, uh, but what I believe more importantly is looking at T-cell responses and, and, and a deep immunophenotypic strategy. And in the UK, this has been run through the Octave study, which is funded uh, by the Medical Research Council through the National Core Studies Program. And this is recruiting myeloma patients to the, the blood cancer cohort. It is a trial that's looking at COVID vaccine efficiencies in immunocompromised patients across solid organ transplantation, renal liver disease, and stem cell transplantation, as well as patients with autoimmune disorders. But for the blood cancer cohort, it's going to be myeloma. And we are currently collecting and analysing that data, which hopefully will inform uh, the community, the clinical community, about the efficacy of the vaccines, which were AstraZeneca and the initial one was Pfizer. So there were a combination of vaccines in there. And this may well form the foundation for evidence-based practice to actually give further booster vaccinations to to myeloma patients and or there may well be something to be gained from switching brands because of the different biological effects of those vaccines.